Okay, so we are in concept two now, and we're going to be talking about broad patterns that we see when we look at evidence of evolution. And we're going to talk through, these are each of the ones we're going to talk through. Um, it's going to be very short notes. So if you were hating me during concept one, I promise all the other concepts this unit are much, much smaller and more digestible. So first, one pattern we see in evolution um, over time is we've seen speciation. And so this is forming of a new species by evolution from a pre-existing species. So first, we need to understand what a species is to even understand how a new species could form. And according to the biological species concept, a species is defined as a group of organisms that can successively interbreed and produce viable, fertile offspring. So meaning offspring that can not only survive, but also can reproduce themselves and pass on their traits. Now, in order for this to happen, this speciation, where one species kind of branches off from a pre-existing species and ends up becoming its own species, there has to be some sort of isolation. So there has to be some sort of isolation and barrier that forms that prevents this group, this subset of the original species population from reproducing with the, the original population and they're isolated enough that over time they become, they've only interbred with each other for so long that their genes become so different from the original gene pool that they can no longer reproduce with those and produce, again, viable, fertile offspring. And this is not something that happens overnight, and it's not something that happens 24-7, okay? But it we have seen it happen before, in populations and there's a great video we're going to watch in some later um in a later activity where you'll get to see some examples and so at the point that two groups of organisms can't reproduce with each other anymore um, we would and produce the viable fertile offspring we would say that speciation has occurred okay extinction is just the opposite so something you're going to see today is every pattern we're going to talk about kind of has an opposite pattern so the opposite of speciation would be extinction. And so this is the elimination of a species. And we kind of see this happening two ways. There's gradual extinction, which occurs at a slow rate over a long period of time. So there's gradual changes in a climate, or there's a natural disaster that, that continually happened that caused this slow, gradual extinction of a species. A mass extinction is like all at once. There's some sort of catastrophic event and it's going to change the environment subtly and totally wipe out a species. And that can be a massive volcano um, erupting, a meteor striking the earth, um, a huge tsunami that wipes out a population, that kind of thing. Okay, the next pattern of evolution is gradualism. And gradualism is slow, constant changes over long periods of time. I'm talking hundreds, thousands, millions of years, long period of time. And a great, great, great example of this is the evolution of peppered moths, which you can see pictured here, which has happened in like neat recent history because of the Industrial Revolution, um, where in England, they started seeing that because of pollution, trees that were lighter bark colored started becoming darker in bark color. And so there was already naturally existing variation between moths in terms of if they were lighter in shade versus dark. But what happened is over time, the darker moths were blending into the polluted trees better. So they were living longer and they were reproducing more than the lighter colored. So over time, that population evolved and gene pools changed, gene frequencies changed, and dark became more common in that population. And there's a great simulation I can show you of how that happened. Okay, kind of the opposite of gradualism would be punctuated equilibrium. And I like to say it that way so you remember bursts of change and then periods of stability. That's what we think of when we think of punctuated equilibrium. There's a ton of change and then a bunch of stability. And the best example of this is looking at how the mammal population changed throughout the Mesozoic and Paleozoic eras when there were kind of the big five mass extinctions that occurred that could have like wiped out species and caused new ones to arise and flourish and um, and there'd be a lot of stability before the next one would occur. So that is an example of punctuated equilibrium and a lot of how mammals really, really changed a lot during that time. 
Okay, the next three are the and the last three are my favorites. Um, they're really important and they're going to come up a lot. So divergent evolution is when a number of different species arise from one common ancestor. So there's some sort of ancestral mammal species that bears and gorillas and elephants and koala bears all have diverged from. So they all, they, you know, these species lived in new environments and that caused them to evolve, to survive in those environments over time to the point where they got so different that they were new species. A type of divergent evolution is adaptive radiation. And this is just seeing divergent evolution on a really small scale over a short period of time. Um, where, so they, those can kind of go hand in hand. Now, convergent evolution is the opposite. So we're looking at species that aren't actually related from an evolutionary standpoint, but they've evolved similar characteristics because they live in similar environments. So they may look like, you may look at them and think, oh, those are related, but from an evolutionary standpoint, they're not. So for example, birds and bats and pterodactyls, they all have wings because they all live in the sky, but you, and they all fly. But bird, you know, a falcon is an ancestral bird. Bats are mammals, and then pterodactyls are related to reptiles. So evolutionarily speaking, they aren't related, closely related. And last, my favorite example of coevolution because we can really see it a lot in um, the environment, and we'll look at this is coevolution. So co means together. This is when two populations of organisms form a specialized relationship and they evolve in response to each other. So flowers and the insects that pollinate them, they rely on each other. So as one has evolved, the other has two in order to survive and um, thus they go together. And there's a really, we're going to watch a video called the evolutionary arms race and there's an excellent example of this in the video, beginning of that video that I think will be a good ex, ex, um, illustration for you. And that is a brief overview of patterns of evolution.